the American Visioning Art Museum, of which I'm founder and director, is now turning 14 years old this month. Uh, we are the official national museum for intuitive, self-taught creativity of all sort. And um, very proud to be Baltimoreans. It's kind of the right cauldron of creativity to be here. Well, I think that um, visionary art is perhaps the most narrative of all the visual arts because um, a, my favorite artists don't even watch themselves be artists. Um, much like my favorite spiritual friends don't watch themselves be art, be you know spiritual. And the um, the self-taught um, uh, artist, the person is just is just leaking out of them. Usually it's in response to something they care deeply about. It's not just kind of visually interesting. They're really trying to express a message. And so it's a natural storytelling art. I used to work with scientists a lot, and so many of them would say they get their best in, uh, you know, insights when they would take a nap or walk alone in the woods. And it's uh, where there's so much emphasis on learning, learning, learning in a school's you know, institutional setting, which is wonderful. But I don't think there was enough emphasis on this kind of listening within. And that's what the museum's about. Well, you know, Baltimore is such a cauldron. I mean, it had the first American Catholic saint, but it also had, you know, the most famous atheist in America, Madeline Murray O'Hare, living here in Parkville when she took prayer out of school. And of course, the Ouija board was founded here. So it's this all these opposing kind of forces that make it this very rich, creative climate. People go by, they often are impressed with the glittering mosaic mirrored walls, but not everybody knows that they're made by kids from the either the Southern High School when that was around and now with our partnership with kids at the Juvenile Detention Center. And what people need to know is that 10%, only 10% of kids who are in our juvenile detention system are in for violent crime. 90% of them are in for nonviolent crime. And so we have apprenticed them. They get lifelong membership in the museum. And those glittering, beautiful walls have come pouring through their hearts and hands. And they'll be able to take their children, their grandchildren there. And to me, that's a very meaningful, not make work, not copy the old masters, but really, uh, you know, cherishing our young people in a way uh, that puts them in partnership with people who are klutzes and break their family dishes, and they haul it down to us, and it becomes part of the community wall built by the kids. My hope for the city of Baltimore is that we have universal health care, that we um, spend more money on education and support of teachers than we do on war that uh, Tony's program is true. We're all eating our own, uh, you know, locally grown uh, foods and we have less diabetes. So I hope it becomes uh, the dream of the Founding Fathers, uh, but a more holistic one that extends to all people.